Okay, we're back with our uh, third and final installment of this um, uh, part four woodworking SketchUp tutorial. And so what we want to do now is we left off with this as part of our drawing. Um, I'm going to have you guys choose whatever you'd like. But I want to show you how to do it. We're going to go into materials. Okay. And right now it's just at this house, which means this is the materials that are currently in your model. And what we want to do is we want to switch over to this one. And it lets us browse. And you've done this before in some of your other videos. And you can make this anything you want. I don't, it doesn't matter to me whatsoever. I'm going to go with the wood. But if you want to just paint it, if you want to choose something else, you can be totally as, as original as you'd like. I'm going to go down here to this um, oak one. And I'm just going to see what it looks like. I'll hit this once. And so what happened there was because I had my paint bucket and I just clicked this one object, everything's locked together. It painted the whole surface underneath all over. If I hit one leg, it's going to do the same thing. Okay. Let me show you the difference here. So I'm going to hit Control Z, Control Z, and back out of there. So let's go ahead and do one leg at a time. So, whoops, I didn't mean to triple click there. Let's just double click one of our legs and let's get our paint bucket again. And now, if we paint one surface of one leg, notice what happened. So, by double clicking and opening the component, and then clicking on one surface, it just painted the one surface, but it also then made all my components the same, which is kind of what I wanted to show you. So if I did this outside of there and painted it, it does just one leg, not all the components. Hit Control Z, spacebar, double click, but we still can paint everything together. Though. So if I still triple click and go back to my paint bucket tool, Everything selected, and now I've got all four done. Click out of that, good to go. And now let's um, let's do the same thing. So double click this. You can do that, or you could triple click paint bucket. We get everything. And it should have done the other one as well. Perfect. Triple click. Now we have two groups in here, so we got to do this again. So I double click to open the drawer front, then I double click to open this wood um, thing here, the uh, actual drawer front, not the pull. Hit B for paint bucket. Oops, I forgot to select everything. Two, three. Hit B for paint bucket. There's that. I can click out of it. So that just closed this, but I'm still in my component. You can do this. Triple click. Hit B. Paint that. Or you could each you can paint everything individually, however you choose to do it. Hit B for paint bucket, and there we go. So I went with kind of this natural uh, oaky looking color. You can go whatever you want; that doesn't matter to me. But please do use some material and paint it something. You can change the color. You could put any pattern, color, material. It doesn't matter to me. But choose something and make your your table some type of um, pattern. Okay. And so now what we want to do is I want you to try to orient your screen something like this. Get it close to this so that you're on this angle. And then we're going to go over here to this tape measure tool. We're going to click this. And instead of using the tape measure, which we've been using pretty frequently, we're going to slide down to dimensions. And I want you guys to learn to dimension, um, to learn about the dimension tool as well. First thing we're going to do is we're going to hover over the back corner, click once, come down here to this kind of other back corner and then slide up. And you can see now that it's telling me that that's 48 inches. Well, I already knew that. But now I'm going to slide this up. I want it on the blue inference point. And now that's going to stay there. Go back to that original point down here to this end. Make it the same height. So now in this angle, I can clearly see that we're at 48 by 14. Okay, next thing we want to do is we're going to go ahead and dimension a leg. Grab that point. To that point and we'll just do one I don't need all the dimensions so now I'm telling me you're telling me that the overall dimensions of this table are 48 by 14 by 30 and then we'll throw some on our drawer fronts and you I want you guys to follow along with all this we'll slide this down we're gonna do this one as well Yeah, I think we can live with that. 
We don't need to do all this perfect. So this is just one way for you to learn the dimension tool. And then also it'll help me to kind of uh, grade this for you a little bit. And so I'm, I'm now moving. See, that was my orientation was like this, but that 15 right here became hard to read. So I'm just changing my angle a little bit to get both the 15s easily read. Get a nice view of our table. Zoom in a little bit. And I'm going to go ahead and hit save. And I want you guys to do this as well. And then we're going to come back over here and um, let's see. I got my outliner here. All that's good. So now the last thing we're going to do is just turn this in. So to turn it in, we'll go back to our stacks over here. And then I'm going to hover over download. And we're going to hover then over and click on ping, P-N-G. And we have our table here. And this is okay, but I want to make sure I get a really good view. Um, right now, this is the size of this image. If you decide you want to change that, so let's say I want to bring this down. I'm going to make this 1,200. Hit enter. So it changes the shape of this image that you're going to then um, export and turn in for me. I want to make sure I can see everything. Zoom in a little bit more. Fill that right up. That was really too far. I think we're good with that. So that is the image I like. Um, and we're going to go ahead and then turn this in. Let's back up. I want you to do one more thing. Change my mind. Okay, so we're going to back up. We're going to cancel this export if I can figure out how to do that down there. Cancel. I'm going to show you guys one more little thing we can do. So let's go back into our tabletop. So we got our select tool. We double clicked our select tool. And now we're going to put in like a little watermark. So then I can make sure everybody's doing their own work here a little bit too. I got to figure out where it is right there. So if you click on the circle tool, you get all of these boxes, circles, all that good stuff. And we want to go down to here where it says 3D text. Okay, in this where it says 3D text, I would like you to type your last name or your first name. Either one is fine, but type your name out in there. You can choose whatever font you would like. Uh, I will go with kind of a normal plain one there. Let's make it bold. Our height, we don't want 12 inches. Let's make our height <coughs> um, 8 inches. We want text filled, yes. Text extrusion, yes. We're going to make this um, just a quarter of an inch, 0.25. And we're going to hit uh, OK. And we get this 3D text thing. And then you want to, I want you just to place this, doesn't have to be perfect, somewhere in the middle of your drawing. Okay? And right now it's on top of it. And that's okay. But we're going to try and do a little bit better. Let's see if we can now hit move. Okay? And we want to keep it locked in. So I just hit the up arrow. Okay, that didn't work for what I wanted. We're going to try, um, how do we want to do this? So let's, uh, Hit your space bar, and on this we're going to right click, and we're going to go up to scissors, and we're going to cut that out. Okay, now click outside of your tabletop, right, and so that component's closed, and now we're going to right click where we were, we're going to go back up here, so we just cut it out, and if you go down here, this is a feature called paste in place, so it's going to paste whatever I cut out right exactly back where it was. So now I'm going to paste it in place, and you can see that that put that right on that table. And that's what we want. Okay, let's see if we can move it now. And then so what we're going to do is uh, we get our select tool. We're going to right click on this and we're going to explode it. So as soon as we made these 3D letters, it locked everything together. So I want to explode it and then I'm going to go right back in and I'm going to group it again. And now I've made it my own group. And so now I'm going to hit the M for the Move tool, and I clicked on the top of that. Okay, now I'm going to hit the up arrow, and it locks me in. So the only way this is going to move is up and down, and that's what we want. Okay, and what we're going to do is we're going to come over here, and we want it to move it down so that it's flush with the top of our table. All right, and so what we have then is this grading now kind of down in there a little bit, and that's what we want to do.
And so we'll just leave that in there like that. You've got kind of a watermark. It'll be kind of visible, kind of not. So now let's save that, and we're going to go back into our whole printing process that we did. And you'll have a little watermark in there so that I know that you did your own work. So we'll just go back to our stacks, click, hover, go down to ping. We're going to do 1,200. Tab, locks it in. And right here, if I want to move it, so it's automatically at this. If I just hit the shift key and hold it, it brings it to the hand. And now I can just kind of move it, zoom in one, hit shift again, move it, do any editing I want. If I want to spin it a little bit, I think I'm pretty happy with that. So then this would be what we turn in now. All right, so now we can hit export as ping. For you guys, when you do this, it's going to kick it right to your, um, it asks me where I want to save it. That's going to kick it right to your downloads automatically. So you'll get a little pop-up down here that says that it went to your downloads. And then if you go over here, that's where it will be when you go to find it. Okay. Um, other than that, that's, that's pretty much all there is to it. So I'm going to go ahead and save mine to that. And that will be what you turn in for this assignment. Okay, thanks for listening.